Hello, welcome to Show Me Your Shelfie. My name is Salik and I have a question for you. Do you ever feel a little bit jealous of some of those TikTokers or a friend who's always talking about all these super spicy romanticy books, but you're just not willing to go into that genre? That's not a genre that's for me. I am a fan of literary fiction. I do like fantasy sometimes, but um, a whole giant tome of Sarah J. Mass just isn't something that I'm super excited to pick up. At the same time, I do sometimes feel a little bit jealous when my sister calls me and says, oh, it's spicy. Um, so if that is you, if you're feeling like, I want some spice, I am a woman, <laughs> I need some literary spice, I have a recommendation for you. C. Pum Shang's Land of Milk and Honey was spicy. It was a spicy one. Um, so already off the top, you can know where my fun like rating will be for this one. It was fun. This story takes place in the future. There is a smog cloud that has covered the world and killed 98% of the biodiversity. That's food sources. And so everyone is eating gray mush that kind of reminds me of like Soylent. And this main character is a chef. She is an American kind of living in exile in England. And if during the pandemic, you remember, there were times where it was just so difficult to cross borders. We're talking about a time like that. So we've got our American chef cooking and eating mush in uh, England. And she has an opportunity to go up, up to a mountaintop to be a chef to the uber wealthy. It's a mountaintop in Italy and it's also a research facility and they have access to a lot of delicious delectable, um, highly enjoyable, super pleasurable food. So she goes up there and that's kind of where the main setting of the story takes place. That is what the story is about. In this story, there's a, a romance, um, obviously, <laughs> there's a romance. And this book is dealing with themes of nationality, pandemic behavior, capitalism, what are the uber wealthy, and doing it with, with nuance. You know, I don't think some of these wealthy capitalists, they're, they're not all nasty pigs at the end. You know, it's not, it's not a eat the rich, although there's some of that going on. But I think she, she handles it with a lot of nuance and a lot of thought. And you're thinking about all these things as the character, like, yes, you would like to escape the smog. You would like to have access to a research facility. There are some things that the research facility they're doing that are that are good for the world, for the common man. And then there are some things that they're doing that are just purely selfish, narcissist, and and um, not good, not healthy. So that's kind of you know what the story is about. The pieces of this book that were super five star for me were the world building. I really could see this happening. I could imagine this happening and it going down kind of like this. The world building was spectacular, you know, up there with the, some of the great sci-fi writers, right? Like you just felt like it, it all made sense as you read it, you could see the world that was being, that she was putting together. So her world building was spectacular. Her style, very lush, beautiful prose. If you do not like, I think they call it purple prose. This is super um, like Marilyn Monroe Robinson, Paul Harding, um, you know, a lot, there's lots and lots of them. Those are the two that I can think of like right off the, Toni Morrison I think has some super lush, you know, I love poetry kind of narratives or uh, language. The, the language is super, super lush. So those were the parts that are five star. The, the lushness of the language and the, the world building. There were some pieces that I was a little bit like, huh. Um, and I think part of that is the book is such a slender little book. It's so short. I, I think that some of the character, first of all, was a little bit cold. So I felt like I was reading it a little bit from my arm's length away, even though I got some of the good, the good spice. Si Zhang has done to strawberries what Timothy Chalamet did for me with peaches. Just like, Oh wow, you know, I really never recognized the level of sensuality um, in this specific piece of fruit. So 
I am forever changed and approaching strawberries, which are typically like the thing thought of as romantic, but I don't know if they were thought of of this level of sexuality. I think she compared it to the the inner thigh of a woman, the soft inner thigh of a woman. But it doesn't sound cheesy. When I say it, it sounds not good. When you're reading it though, you're just feeling the woo. So okay, we've already talked about the things I love. There was one moment in the plot where something terrible has happened. There's a crash and something happens and we never sat with it with the characters or realized the trauma or the horror of it, even though it started to propel the plot on. And I thought, gosh, I, I feel like I missed that whole moment. I went back and read it and it still didn't like resonate as this like big, big moment. I thought that was kind of a, a little bit of a, a miss. Um, so, and then again, so we've got characters of three, plots of three, the setting five, five for the setting. The pacing was a three just because you were having to go back um, be because of these moments that were kind of missed and because the characters were kind of out to here. It, you, you have to go back and say like, what are you talking, what what happened that made you change your mind or have a, you know, your change your decision? Uh, so the pacing was a three, style, five star, luscious, beautiful, sexy. Um, and then the I think the truths, she was trying to attack so many truths, you know, about nationality, culture, food, capitalism. There was so much bundled in there. It's so full that I really think to get into all of it, it needed to be a little bit longer in my opinion. But uh, was it fun? Yes, I'm gonna say four for fun. So this wasn't a bad book. I loved the book, I loved the book. Um, but it wasn't a five across the board for me. I saw some issues with it. However, I recommend it, you know, I recommend it, especially if you're feeling like, I need some spice in my life. I am not a sexless book nerd. <laughs> or maybe sometimes I am, you know, a Moby Dick is pretty dry. Well, it's not dry, it's full of the spiritual and the emotional and the nature. But sometimes you just want the pleasure. Um, so Land of Milk and Honey was a pleasure to read. If you read this book, let me know what you thought in the link below. Also, this book, it was my February, February for the Ben Reads Good Challenge. I read this to participate in his uh, book challenge. I'll link his book challenge below as well. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Um,